This not, conference will now be recorded. None else can heal all our soul diseases. No, not one. No, not one. Singing Jesus knows all about our struggle and he will guide us till the day is done well there's not a friend like the lowly jesus no not one no not one singing jesus knows all about our struggle he will guide us till the day is done. Oh Lord, there's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. Hallelujah. No, not one. Our Father and our God, we come this evening to, to say thank you. Oh God, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. With our hands lifted up, with our hearts filled with praise, with a heart of thanksgiving, we will bless thee, O Lord, O God. We thank you that you just smile on us another day. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice, we shall rejoice, and be glad in this day. Thank you, O God, for giving us this day our daily bread. Thank you for allowing us to see, eyes to see, ears to hear, God, a nose that we could smell, a mouth that we could taste, O God. Thank you for the senses that you've given us. Oh God, thank you for common sense. Oh God, thank you for a reasonable portion of, of health and strength today. Thank you that the blood is still running warm in our veins. Oh God, thank you that we're still able to inhale and exhale on our own. We're not, we're not, we may not be 100%. Oh God, and we realize the truth be all told, there's something wrong with all of us, but thank God that we still got to praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We give you praise today. Oh God, thank you that we're able to come on the line one more Tuesday night. Oh God, from last Tuesday to this day, so many things have happened. Oh God, so many people have gone from time into eternity. But Lord, you spared our moments to roll for a little while longer and for that we say thank you. Thank you, oh God, for looking beyond our faults and seeing our very need. Thank you for being our father. Thank you, oh God, for washing away our sins, making us whole again. Thank you that you gave us the Holy Ghost, oh God, the Holy Spirit that comforts us, that guides us, that brings back to our remembrance all things, that protects us, oh God, that teaches us, oh God, that shows us, that leads us, oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh God, that blesses us, oh God, we thank you tonight, oh God, even as we come tonight to once again study to show thyself approved unto God as workmen that needeth not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of God. Be with us, open up our understanding in the name of Jesus, oh God. And we've been grateful and mindful to give you glory, honor, and prayer. We pray that you would bless tonight, bless the first prayer that was uttered tonight, bless the first song that was sung tonight. Oh God, thank you for the testimony. Thank you for the words of exhortation that was given, oh God, by the elders, oh God, of your goodness and your mercy. We thank you for those that's on the line tonight. Thank you for each and every one. Bless them according to what they stand in the need of. Oh God, thank you for those that want to be on the line, but for some unknown reason, they're not on the line tonight. Oh God, then I pray that you would touch hearts and minds and others, oh God, that they would come and partake and participate of your word, which is the bread of life. Oh God, thank you. Help them become, oh God, hungry for the word. In the name of Jesus Christ, we continuously look to you, the author, the finisher of our faith. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you tonight. We greet you in the name, the precious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. So glad I'm here. Amen. We used to sing that song, so glad I'm here. So glad I'm here. In Jesus' name, I'm going to pray while I'm here. I'm going to sing while I'm here. I'm going to read and I'm going to receive. Amen. While I'm here. In Jesus' name, we greet you. Amen. We thank God for our uh, prayer service, our devotional leader, our chairman of deacons, 
Deacon Frank Bryant. Amen. We thank God for him. We thank God for all the deacons tonight. We thank God for uh, all our ministerial staff tonight who's on the line. Amen. Who participates uh, in worship. We're blessed, Greater Central. I tell you, we are a blessed church. And if you look around and go other places, amen, you can see how the Lord is blessing us, how the Lord is keeping us. He kept us from January 1st down to the last month of the year. We thank God that we was able to part partake of the Lord's Supper on Sunday, the first Sunday in the last month of the year. And so we're grateful to God. Count your blessings, name them, amen, one by one. Count your many blessings and see what the Lord has done. Amen. I know sometimes you we get all we all get down in our spirit. Sometimes we become discouraged. But if you ever want to encourage yourself, I I I I implore you just to pause and start counting your blessings and see what the Lord look back over your life and amen. If you get if you got enough fingers and got enough toes. Just look over your life and see, even when you wasn't thinking about God, how God was blessing you, how God was keeping you, how God was sustaining you, how God was preserving you, how God was opening up doors for you, how was God making a way out of no way for you. And you know, sometimes uh, when we didn't even deserve it, amen, you know, we, you know how blessed we are, brothers and sisters, we are reaping where we didn't, in areas that we did not even sow. Can I get a witness? I was talking with a brother earlier today and he was sharing how the opportunity is opening up in his life for a promotion. And I said, thank the Lord. I said, we thank God for, the, you have the credentials, amen, to get the position. And then sometimes you know people who can speak on your behalf. That's seen. But I also reminded him of the unseen. You have to always remember that somebody prayed for you. Somebody had you on their mind. It took a little time. Even though the person may have moved off the scene, amen, even though mama and grandmama and uncle and auntie have moved off the scene, but somebody prayed. Maybe some pastor, some deacon prayed for you, and they have gone on to glory, but I stopped to let you know that their prayer is still in effect. <laughs> amen. And I, I just think, I just look around and I thank God for all the prayer. I thank God for the cloud of witnesses. You better know that up, up above your head, there are some witnesses in the air that cheer you on. Amen. Amen. There is a cloud of witnesses that tell you, amen. That's what the songwriter says, something inside of me telling me to go ahead. Amen. It must be the Holy Ghost. Somebody is, pu is pushing you on. Amen. You got the wind beneath your wing. God bless you tonight. Uh, tonight. Uh, just want to share that uh, as of today, we have no further information about the service for uh, Brother George Middleton. I did speak with the undertaker Isaiah Owens on yesterday. He uh, He's working with the family. So as of yesterday, there was no date and, or time uh, set up. But what is clear that the family do want to have the service at Greater Central. So uh, Reverend Owens shared with me when he uh, finalize everything that he would call me and then I will allow the people at Greater Center, the people of God at Greater Center to know that we can come and be a support to the Middleton family. So let's continue to keep them in prayer. Uh, also, I was able on, on uh, Sunday after morning worship, uh, we had a blessed day on worship on Sunday, amen, uh, that I was able to travel upstate Orange County, amen, to visit our mother, Janie Reed, amen, and she was in a great spirit. We thank God we was able to lift her spirit. It looked like she lifted my spirit. She was able to pray with her, commune her, and fellowship with her and the family. So we thank God for that opportunity. So let's continue to pray for all our mothers. Amen. They pray for us. They paved the way for us. And we continue. We thank God for Mother Saunders. Amen. She was able to get away and be with her family. I heard you, Mother. And uh, go and come back safe. God bless her for another birthday. We haven't forgotten you, mother. God bless you. But we thank God for your spiritual exhortation that you give to the children of God, just to continue to have faith in God. And you know, one thing I love to hear, seasoned saints. Amen. I love to hear seasoned saints. 
It seems as though it's something in their speech that uh, they know what they're talking about. They know who they're talking about, and they know the Lord for themselves. Amen. Uh, I love what the psalmist said. I once was young, but now I'm old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed. But hey, you got to know the Lord when they were to say he walked with the Lord. And God bless you tonight. We're not going to be long tonight. I'm going to, we, we're going to, because this is not a long psalm tonight. Uh, uh, it's powerful, seven verses, Psalm 67. Uh, we're going to read it. We're going to share with it the word of God with you. Amen. And we, as we go into this holiday season, amen, we pray that, the, that this have been a blessing to you. Uh, we're going to look at, uh, we'll probably have two more uh, classes of study as we go into this next week and the following week. We'll go up to the 21st and then uh, we'll take a, a, a little break from study, not from prayer. Amen. So probably the 28th and uh I believe uh, the fourth during the holiday session, we'll take a break from our study, but we'll resume on the 11th. I that date is correct. Uh, nevertheless, uh, we'll always have prayer. I always be up with prayer. Amen. We the prayer must not cease. Amen. So I'm going to read uh, Psalm 67. Uh, our material that we read from our, our the main material is the Bible. Amen. We, we study from the God's word. Amen. And then our aid to the Bible is this book. I pray that has been a blessing. Be worshipful by Warren W. Warsby. Amen. And we're going to look at Psalm 67 tonight. Uh, Psalm 67. We're going to read out of the King James Version. Amen. And then we'll uh, share a few uh, commentary notes. And then we'll look in the book for a little while, and then we'll be on our way. God bless you. Let's read Psalm 67 together. God be merciful unto us, and bless us, and cause his face to shine upon us, Selah, that thy way may be known upon earth. Thy saving health among all nations, let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. O let the nation be glad and sing for joy. For thou shalt judge the people righteously and govern the nations upon earth. Selah. Let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. Then shall the earth yield her increase. And God, even our own God, shall bless us. God shall bless us, and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. Let me read that verse again. God shall bless us, and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. Thus ends the reading of Psalm 67. Uh, Psalm 67, uh, once again, brothers and sisters, the writer of Psalm 67 uh, is anonymous. And so, uh, as I said, on even in Psalm 66, uh, a lot of times uh, we know about out of the 150 Psalms, we know that at least 70 to 73 of them was attributed to David. And so uh, they're the ones that remain anonymous. Uh, some of them, uh, some of the writing is can be uh, contributed to David, but they're just not sure. So that's why the, the penmanship of this psalm is anonymous. But we do know one thing that uh, David did introduce uh, music into the temple worship. And so this psalm was addressed to the chief musician, uh, one of the chief musicians. So it can be an indication whether David's name was attached to it or not, but it's a prayer praise psalm that was uh, sung in the temple worship amen so it was it's a song in the form of a prayer praise you know a lot of our songs that we sing in worship you know as you know the lord is my light and my salvation or we even sing the our father prayer or we we sing the 23rd psalm the lord is my shepherd so a lot of the psalms that have been converted uh translated into songs of worship and so uh 
we thank God for the, some of the songs that we sing contemporary. That's why I always encourage uh, music directors or choir leaders to uh, study the word of God. So, because many of the songs that sung is taken from scripture. It should be Bible-based uh, is the message that go along with the music. So when you learn the message or when you know the message, which comes from the word, it just makes singing the music or singing the song even the more uh, effective in your music ministry. Some people just want to know the words of the song, but they don't want to know the message. Can I get an amen there? When you know the word, the singing part is easy. Amen. Matter of fact, you can meditate on it day and night. Amen. God bless you. So this 67 Psalm is a prayer praise song, a song on string instruments written to the chief musician. The Psalm 67 is a communal prayer, communal, bringing the people together for God's blessings. It's a liturgical prayer of the people at the conclusion of worship. Some believe it could be a, a form in a form also, if it's a prayer in the form of uh, an invocation, invocation. Uh, I would notice sometimes people will say when, 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 when we call to worship, when we have worship on Sunday morning and whether I'm the worship leader most of the time or, or I may not have to be the worship leader, but in my role as pastor, uh, I'm the one that in my presence, I'm the one that called to worship. I do the initial call to worship, amen. And then after, while I'm standing there, amen, I give a short prayer, which is called the invocation, which is only, we act, and it's done in a short form, amen. The only thing you're asking God when you give the invocation is asking God's presence to come in and take over the worship experience, amen come really not in the building, but in our hearts. You invoking God's spirit, God's presence into the uh, atmosphere for worship. Amen. And you don't have to be drawn out. Amen. There's a difference between the invocation and we would say the morning prayer. If someone asks you to give the invocation, it should be short, direct, and spontaneous. Amen. Likewise, truth to be told, uh, there's a time and place for everything. Uh, even in our morning prayer, it should be based on really uh, uh, adoration. It should be based on thanksgiving. In our morning prayer, our morning prayer should uh, be uh, based on, if you just go with adoration and thanksgiving, asking God to you know, continue to be in our midst. You can ask, you can make a short petition, amen, uh, unto the Lord. You can ask short uh, intercessory in behalf of the Lord, you can ask God to purge us. Amen. Confession. Short. You know, public prayer ought to be short, but private prayer ought to be long. Amen. Amen. Public prayer, short, direct, and right to the point. Uh, private prayer. If you notice Jesus in his private prayer, he stayed up in the mountain. He would pray all night privately. Amen. So when we go into our secret closet, amen, that's when we can stay <laughs> you know, as long as you desire. But publicly, I know what we, we need to be, first of all, guided by the Holy Spirit. So you cannot put a time limit on uh, prayer publicly, but you always should be guided and mindful that uh, we're uh, before the Lord. And you always want to be guided by the Holy Spirit. And one thing about the Holy Spirit, when the Holy Spirit guides you, it will always guide you in the right path. It won't take you where it won't be able to keep you and it won't be able to bless you. And so uh, so this prayer could have been part of an invocation or it could have been part of doxology, which is praise. So where did this song fit in? That's the question. So there are some questions as we study some of these psalms, there's still some question marks as far as who, uh, where, where, what was really uh, the theme of it. Because when you look at a couple of commentaries, uh, you get different opinions, amen. That's man-based opinion. This song sung prior, it was either sung prior to or immediately after the benediction, uh, this song. The theme of Psalm 67 
is joy comes from spreading the news about God around the world. Uh, God's blessing of his people, as well as his saving acts of his people in their behalf will match their attention. Also, what happens is when it shows, it displays God's blessing of his people, as well as saving acts in their behalf that will catch the attention of the nations or the world and move them to praise God. Amen. So while God blessing his people, amen, uh, the Israelites, amen, in the context of this uh, psalm, amen, and they praise him, it would cause others around, other nations, the Gentile nation, to catch hold. You know, praise ought to be like uh, a wildfire. Amen. Amen. It ought to catch hold. Amen. When you start praising God, it, it, we are to ignite it. Amen. Uh, and once it get ignited, it's supposed to spread. Can I get a witness? I don't preach there. Amen. So that the spread, the spread of praise, the spread of salvation, the talk of salvation, the spread of the gospel. Amen. We're supposed to spread it. Amen. And that's how it causes people to grow. Amen. That's how it, and I, here's another point. This psalm validates that God is an, is an inclusive God. Amen. Inclusive God. We, we've been talking about that in our previous studies, in our previous lessons, even in our, our church school. God is a God of all people. His plan of salvation is for all mankind. He's not exclusive. Yes, he may have uh, started... Uh, uh, with the Jews, amen, and then it reached the Gentiles, uh, and I want to say to us, you know, if you have people to argue, no, we're the chosen, we're the chosen, don't get caught up with where and how the salvation process got started, we understand it came through the Jew first, but focus on the end, amen, that God's plan of salvation is for, for all nations, and we're going to reiterate that when we look, we're going to look at Genesis. Uh, uh, we've always looked at that. It should be highlighted in the Bibles. Genesis uh, chapter 12 and verses 1 through 3. But the highlight verse is verse number 3. Genesis chapter 12. It should be highlighted in your Bible. Let me just read that real quick. Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee. I will make thee of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee and make thy name great, and I and thou shalt be a blessing. Look what verse 3 in Genesis chapter 12 says. I will bless them that bless thee, and I will curse him that curses thee. And in thee shall all families, there's that word all, A double L, that little word A double L, but it means everybody, everything. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. So God is a God of inclusion. He has a plan way back from Genesis, from the even before time. All, that means you, me, everybody else, the Jew, the Gentile, uh, it, even. Uh, the plan of salvation calls for repentance. Once you repent, and, 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 and the, God is going to do his part by the spread of the gospel. Once you hear the gospel, once there's reason in your soul, amen, you repent and turn to the Lord. Amen. So it may have started through Abraham, and, and, and we talk about receiving the Abrahamic blessing, the covenant of Abraham, of the blessings of Abraham. Yes, we're inclusive, included in that process. Uh, and now also we come through the process of salvation because now we're part of Christ's church. Amen. You know, back in the Old Testament, we talk about we're the children of Abraham. Uh, but now in New Testament, we are disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ, the church. Amen. So God has a plan to save mankind if you want to be saved. Amen. Psalm 67 is in conjunction with the world mission that is found in St. Matthew 28. And let's listen to what St. Matthew, that should be highlighted in your Bible. Turn with me, St. Matthew chapter 28 and uh, verse, we're going to do 18 through 20, which is known as the Great Commission. We talk about 
all nations, right? All people, all nations. This is what this psalm is talking about, shall give God praise. Look at the uh, St. Uh, Matthew chapter 28 and verses 18 through 19. St. Matthew chapter 28, which was known as the Great Commission to the church. Amen. But the, the idea is that all nations, amen. Let me read it for you tonight. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach, what? All nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you you always even unto not until but unto the end of the world so god's plan is of salvation brothers and sisters is for all mankind and so this psalm here encourages not just the jew amen they recognize their god amen as the god of all of of, of all god as the lord of lord and as the king of kings but uh uh the point is clear in Psalm 67, may God bless his people Israel in such a manner that the message of God's way become known throughout the earth. That's God's plan. Uh, this Psalm calls for the nation of, call for the nations of the world to praise God, to join Israel in honoring the, the creator of the world. So like I said, it's an inclusive Psalm. A praise and Psalm 67 have three movements that you'll find in this psalm. Uh, the first movement is a call for God's blessings for the purpose of world evangelization. A call for God's blessings for the purpose of world evangelization, and that's you'll find that in Psalm in verses one and two. The second movement in Psalm 67 is a call for the nation to bless the Lord in view of his righteous judgment and that's verses three through four and then the third movement is a call for the nation to bless the lord in view of his coming kingdom and that's verses five through seven so let us take a look let's do some reading it's not too much reading uh there uh i don't know we're going to be tonight on page 215 in our book and it's not much reading, it's just a page and a half. I'll just read it and we'll go back and look at some of the verses. Except for verses one and six, each verse of this brief psalm mentioned all nations or all people in, in that respect fits in with Psalm 65 and 66. It's a psalm of praise to God for all his blessings, as well as a prayer to God that his blessings will flow out to the Gentiles, especially his salvation. This was part of God's covenant with Abraham. We read that in Genesis uh, 12, one through three. A blessing is a gift from God that glorifies his name. Amen, I think we need to have some clarity about a blessing. What are blessings? You know, God just don't bless you to keep it to yourself, but this, it, let's look at it say, a blessing is a gift from God that glorifies his name helps his people and through them reaches out and help others who will glorify his name so we understand what blessings are amen if god bless you with an automobile amen it's not for you to keep it to yourself and just ride in it to yourself amen it's, you know i remember when i got my first car i was 19 years old uh 1983 was 1984 thunderbird just to share with you but you, you ought to thank God for the elders in your life. I remember the late Deacon Charles Taylor, and I'm just a 19-year-old boy, and I pulled up there. But he told me something that I never forgot, and I always live by. He said, if you use it for the Lord, you'll keep it. <laughs> when I had my car, he just dropped that on me. That's why if you walk with wise men, you'll grow wise. They'll drop nuggets on you. He simply said to me, if you use your car, for the Lord, you'll keep it. <laughs> and I tell you, 
Uh, I, I kept that car to the ran ragged end. Every car I had since, I was able to utilize it and help be a blessing to somebody else. God bless me, I bless others, amen? And so that's what a blessing is about, it's a gift. And you know what I, I, I don't understand sometimes? How people get upset with you or people just, just fall out when they were blessed with a gift or that people may argue about something, but it's only a gift, that's all a blessing is. You, you ain't did nothing really to earn it. It is just like God's favor is unmerited. I mean, God's grace is unmerited. You can't earn it. You can't buy it. The favor of God is not fair, but he gives it to whom he chooses. He blesses. And what's good, so awesome about God, he blesses us when we don't even recognize it. We don't even deserve it. And if you look in this lesson tonight, look at the other nations. This is the key thing. The Israelites recognized their help came from the Lord. Their blessings came from the Lord. But look at the other nations, how God was just blessing he cultivated the ground around the world that it, the fruit bore came in their seasons. Amen. Everything came in. It, it all came from God. Amen. And so, uh, and through, and so it happened here. A blessing is a gift from God that glorifies His name, helps His people, and through them reaches out to help others who will glorify His name. God blesses us that we might be a blessing to others. This psalm described the stages in this sequence. Israel blesses the nation. This prayer asks God to bless Israel so that his way, laws, and his salvation might be known, experienced personally throughout the world. It's adapted from the, highly, from the high priestly prayer in Numbers uh, 6, 24 through 26, with the psalmist using Elohim instead of Jehovah. And Elohim is God Almighty or God All Powerful. And then there is a list that I had, and I'll, and I'll bring it up again, of the different names of God. Amen. There's only one God, but his his different name, uh, Jehovah, uh, Nisi, Tiskanu, Jireh, El Shaddai, Elo, Elohim. Uh, so uh, instead of other, and we'll give that list out once again. Uh, the glory of God was an important part of Israel's heritage. For God's glory led Israel through the wilderness and rested over the tabernacle way of the nation's camp, the nation camp. To have the light of God's countenance smile upon them was the height of Israel's blessing, and to lose that glory meant judgment. The prophet Ezekiel watched the glory depart from the temple before the temple was destroyed. God's people today have God's glory within. Uh, in our good works, godly character, and loving ministry, we should reveal that, that glory to the world. In other words, uh, Matthew 5 tells us, let our light so shine before men that they may see our good works and glorify the Father, which is our, he said, we are the salt of the earth, ye are the light of the world. So when they see your good works, amen, when they see your godly character, amen, and, and, and the way how you carry out your ministry, that's all to the glory. It's not to our glory, but it's to God's glory. Can I get a witness there? Everything we do, <laughs> brothers and sisters, if you're gifted in any area, it's only, it's only it's not, and you know what happened? We get caught up in self, but it all goes to glory. And it's how you respond. You know, when you receive the praise of man and don't give God the glory, amen, that pat on the back, that's as far as that goes, amen? But you always ought to point people to God from whom all blessings flow. And so let's look at, I see Sister Kim is on the line. And Sister Kim, would you read, uh, I, I wanna share with us, let's pause right here, I wanna share, show you something. Look at verse number one, which simply says, God be merciful unto us and bless us and cause his face to shine upon us. That's one of the key uh, uh, highlight verses in this psalm. May his face, may uh, cause his face to shine upon us. That's what we're talking about. The glory. What does it mean to have God's face shine upon us? Uh, well, that's what we're talking about. That being that uh, it's an ironic, uh, what we call an ironic blessing. Amen. An Aaronic blessing. 
or it's a, what we call a priestly blessing or Aaronic benediction. We, there are several benedictions that we give. And so, Sister Kim, if you're on the line, and I, I ask that we all turn to Numbers chapter 6. Numbers in the Old Testament, chapter 6. And uh, the highlight verse is 24 through 26. But Sister Kim, if you're on the line, can you read from verse 22 through 27? Good evening, family. Uh, Numbers 6, 22 to 27 reads, And the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron and unto his son, saying, In this way we shall bless the children of Israel, saying unto them, The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. And they shall put my name upon the children of Israel, and I will bless them. Yeah, so when we look at that that verse here, to make his face shine upon us, amen. We're talking about the pleasure of the presence uh, of God, to make his face shine upon us. The pleasure of the presence of God to be upon us. Uh, and then when, when, when his presence is upon us, uh, people would have a sense of God's glorious presence in their lives to make his face shine upon us. Amen. Uh, we all call it to have the anointing. Amen. Amen. That means his presence. Uh, in other words, it also calls for, for God to smile on his face, to, to, to shine upon us. It also is called for God to smile on his people. And from the beginning, God intended to bring his blessings to all nations. Amen. So uh, you, you want to be known. Amen. God, you, you want to be represented. You, you want to be seen. Amen. You, you, Sometimes the only God that people see, and see is the God in you. And so we are representatives uh, of, of God. Amen. And when his face, what he mean by his face to shine upon us, that means we spend some time. No, we're not going to be looking. You know, when Moses went into the presence of the Lord, there was a roar or shine, uh, uh, sheen upon him. Amen. That was recognized. It's almost like he was, uh, uh, came out and, uh, looking like a ghost, so to speak. But what I'm trying to say, when God's face shine upon you, people, can look at you. There's a, a glow about you. Amen. That the, to the world, they look at you strange. But to a, a, a fellow believer of like mind faith, they know that you're, you stay before the presence of the Lord. The presence of the Lord is evident in your life. Amen. Amen. That comes through obedience. Amen. We were talking about that the other day how you walk with God and stuff like that. So allow his face to shine upon you. That means that he's, his glory, amen, is a part of your life, amen. And so I just wanted to bring that to your attention there. To, and that's part of, a, 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 as we say, a, a benediction in the form of a benediction. So it's a priestly benediction that's given and that uh, calls for the blessings of God to, to continue to stay upon uh, his people, amen? Amen, that's what we was talking about, the, the Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and to give thee peace, amen. That's what they're talking about, that uh, they're asking God to smile on his people, that's what they mean from there. And so uh, when you look at uh, Numbers 20, number six, verses 24 through 26, it's an Ar Aaronic uh, blessing, or a priestly benediction that's given. And so, uh, and, and it's still in effect. That's the good thing about it, it's still in effect. Uh, let's look. go back to the book. Let's go back to our book uh, on page 215. Israel gives us the knowledge of the true and living God, the word of God, and the son of God, Jesus Christ, the savior of the world. And so I wanna say that this lesson always po is pointed to Christ. When you look at it prophetically, uh, some of these things have not been fulfilled yet because the word is still out, the gospel is still out. Uh, 
and not until every the gospel have reached every, to the other ends of the earth before judgment and Christ will come. Amen. Because no one will never have the uh, opportunity to say that we did not know. Amen. So that's how awesome God is. That's how long suffering is. The gospel is going out. Now we know that we have political governments trying to uh, constrain the gospel, trying to prevent the gospel from coming into their country. Uh, they have their own uh, political religion that they condone. Amen. But the gospel is so powerful that he says all nations. So however, don't you know, uh, there used to, was a time that people had to hide just to study the, 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 the written word, amen, because there's other religions and that dominate nations, amen. But the gospel of Jesus Christ is so powerful and so strong that it will overrule every uh, nation. Those that want, who desire to know the Lord in the pardon of their sin, they will have an opportunity. Uh, listen, we'll look at verse number, let's go back to the book, The Nations Praise the Lord. These three verses form the heart of the psalm and focus on the Gentile nation worshiping and praising the God of Israel. Today, the nations have conspired to dethrone the Lord and they want nothing of his way. That's what I'm talking about. But the day will come when all nations will come to the mountain of the Lord and worship the God of Jacob. The New International Version translate these verses as a prayer. May the people praise you. When will this occur? When Jesus Christ established his kingdom. That's what I'm trying to say. This, this is prophetically uh, spoken, is prophetically uh, prayed, is pro prophetically a song that all nations will come. When Christ establishes his kingdom, when he judges the people with justice and guides the nation in the ways of the Lord. The prayer in these verses is the Old Testament equivalent of thy kingdom come in the Lord's prayer. Because there is no king in Israel today, the nations of the world are doing as they please. Amen. Sister Cunningham, can you turn to Judges 17 and 6? Judge, let's read that. Judges 17 and 6. Book of Judges, chapter 17, verse number six. Seventeen six. Yes, yeah. Judges. In those days, there was no king in Israel, but every man did that which was right in his own eyes. Now, I want to let you know, brothers and sisters, this might have been a writ. Old Testament writ, but that's a highlight verse. Don't you know sometime when there is no leadership, uh, people will lean on their own understanding and begin to do that which is right in their own eyes. Amen. And a lot of times in our own eyes, that's the whole idea. We lean on our own understanding and too far away, we will stray. That's why we have to stay connected. Uh, when there's no shepherd, amen, when there's no prophet, when there's no teacher, there's no preacher, there's no word, amen, you're going to do what's right in your own eyes. And don't let no spirit, no evil spirit or ungodly spirit uh, lead you astray from the word of God, amen, because uh, we need God's commandments, we need his laws, we need his statutes, uh, we need his ordinances to govern us because if you don't do it, you're going to lean on your own understanding. And you'd be surprised, brothers and sisters, which your own, your own eyes or your own, your own mind tell you to do. Amen. Your own mind will uh, cause you to, to go astray. You know, your own mind, your own eyes, your own thoughts are ungodly. Amen. Your own eyes, your own thoughts will, will cause you to uh, not lift up Christ. But, but it'll cause you, it'll cause your own destruction. That's the big point I want to make. It'll cause your own destruction and you'll drift away. Let me read the last part. The Lord sends the harvest. Uh, 
what does the harvest have to do with the conversion of the nations of the world? The phrase, then shall the earth yield her increase, is a quotation from Leviticus 26. And Leviticus 26 is a summary of God's covenant with Israel. God made it clear that his blessings on the land depended on Israel's obedience to the law. The blessings he would send Israel would be a witness to the pagan nation that Jehovah alone is the true and living God. And this would give the Jews opportunity to share the word with them. But if Israel disobeyed the Lord, he would withhold the rain and their fields would yield no harvest. And this would put Israel to shame before the Gentile nation. Why would all the ends of the earth fear a God who didn't provide food for his own people? So Israel, brothers and sisters, is the model people. Amen. We, we don't envy Israel. They're the model people. But we come in, we're included as well through Christ, through our salvation plan, our plan of salvation, the church. Amen. And so we are supposed to be representative of all the manifold blessings that God has in store for his people. Amen. As what Peter said, we are chosen a royal priesthood, a, a holy nation, uh, uh, a chosen people. And so when we obey God, we exemplify all uh, uh, the blessings that God have in store for his people. So we're in this lesson, we, we're just using the nation of Israel, amen, to be a model nation, how God, based on their obedience to God, that God will uh, uh, bless their ground, their harvest season. I know it looks like it's just talking about materialistic or agricultural, but also spiritual blessings, amen, we have to be mindful. So through them, the whole nation of the, all the other nations of the world will see that we worship, though they worship the true and living God, Amen. And then other nations would turn to the God of Israel. Amen. Amen. Jehovah. All right. Uh, so, so it says, why would all the ends of the earth fear God who did provide food for his own people? The application to the church today is obvious. As we obey the Lord, pray and trust him, he provides what we need. And the unsaved around us see that he cares for us. This gives us opportunity to tell them about Jesus. While verse six speaks of a literal harvest, it also reminds us of the spiritual harvest that comes as we witness for the Lord. God blesses the nation through his people Israel and through his church, and all the nations should trust him, obey him, and fear him. Amen. So when we look at our lesson tonight, amen, and we look at uh, verse three, uh, let the people Praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. Uh, o, let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for thou shalt judge the people righteously and govern the nations upon the earth. Selah. Verse 5, let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. Uh, uh, Sister Cunningham, can you read Psalms 150, verse number 6? Psalms 150, verse number 6. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise Say that again for me. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. All right. So that's God's plan of salvation. We recognize that He is God. You know, is He's so challenged because everybody have their own. Uh, religion, other these, these other nations, they have their own thought, these other nations have their own gods. But through Israel, God will show himself strong, God will show himself mighty. And we have a job, as, as we read in our book here, that we have to witness, we have to tell of his love as a church, as a body of Christ, amen. Uh, he doesn't bless us to keep it to ourselves, but he shines upon us. Amen. We used to sing a song, shine on me, shine on me. Let the light from the lighthouse shine on me. You, you want God's blessings, amen. But he's not giving you that light, amen, 
to just keep it to yourself. Amen. Matter of fact, the song says, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine where? Everywhere I go. Amen. I'm going to let it shine. This light, God's face to shine upon you. Uh, no man lighted the candle and put it under a, a, a bushel, but he, he puts it up top that it gives light to all. Amen. Amen. Uh, let, let's go to that. Let me, I'm, let's read that. Uh, In the book of, uh, amen. I got something for you here. Let's turn with me uh, to um, St. Matthew. Oh, yeah, here you go. St. Matthew, chapter 5. Can you read that for me, Sister uh, uh, Cunningham, chapter 5? St. Matthew, chapter 5. Okay, the entire chapter. Read uh, 14. Okay. I want 14. Mm -hmm. My favorite. <laughs> <laughs> you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Do Neither do men light a lamp and put it under a bushel, but on a lampstand, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Read Let that. Your, read that left. Number fifteen. Yes. Neither do men light a lamp and put it under a bushel, but on the lampstand, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. So let me read the King James version. It says, "Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel." but on a candlestick and it giveth light unto all. Ain't that a little, there you go that word again, a double -A, that is in the house. Then verse 16, Sister Cunningham. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father who is in heaven. All right, so they see the glory. Your good works is the glory, amen? When they see you doing the good work of the Lord, amen, that's the light, amen. And like I said, and ultimately we glorify our Father, which is in heaven. We stay before his presence. His continent shines upon us. And we all nations, we're supposed to spread this thing that all nations, when Christ comes to establish his kingdom, his idea, that's what the psalmist said, let everything that have breath praise the Lord. That's God's ultimate plan for mankind. He had a plan, man fell in the garden, but God has a plan. The day that you hear my voice, harden not your heart. He will come in and sup with us and he and we him with him. And then there's some blessings that we yet, let me, let me close out on this. We haven't seen nothing yet. Uh, in verse six, it says, then shall the earth yield her increase and God, even our own God shall bless us. Uh, this we I know we're talking agricultural, uh, talking about reaping a harvest, but there are some prophetic blessings that's going to come upon uh, uh, the land, amen. And God's people are going to be recipients of that, amen. God shall bless us, and all the ends of the earth shall fear Him. So that's God's plan for mankind to come into acknowledging who He is. He's an awesome God, amen. And we talk about fear as far as reverence, fear him. You know, it's a dangerous person to be around that don't fear God. I'm telling you, when people could do, and we have people in this world, we have people like Pharaoh, amen. You know what Pharaoh said? I got something for you as we close out. Uh, let's go back to Exodus. Exodus number, and this should be a highlight. Uh, I'm going to give you the chapter here. Here we go. Chapter 5. Come on, read, would you read that for me? Uh, Exodus chapter 5. We're going to look at verses 1 and 2. Exodus chapter. I'm talking about how people don't fear God. And you still have, remember I said Sunday, even though Jezebel is not around, we have that Jezebel spirit. 
But even though Pharaoh is not around, we have that Pharaoh spirit. Exodus chapter five, look at verses one and two. Yeah, it is highlighted. And afterwards, Moses and Aaron went in and told Pharaoh, thus saith the Lord God of Israel, let my people go that they may hold the feast unto me in the wilderness. And Pharaoh said, who is the Lord that I should obey his voice to let Israel go? I know not the Lord, neither mm -hmm. will I let Israel go. All right. In other words, who should who is the Lord that I should fear him or obey him? Amen. And he openly said, I don't know the Lord. And there are some people that live like that in the world. Who is the Lord that I should fear? We talk about fearing God. Who is? Everybody ought to know who the Lord is. Everybody ought to know we sing a song who Jesus is. So we there is a plan. We still have work to do. But God's plan for salvation is ultimately that all nations will bless the name of the Lord. All nations will give him praise. All nations, amen. His God has so much grace. God has so much glory. <laughs> that we can't even sustain it. When you looked at the children of Israel, when God in the Old Testament, when God came in and filled the tabernacle, the glory of the Lord, we talked about that. You cannot even stand in the presence of his glory. But a portion, an a, a inkling of it can be in this now in the form of the spirit. Amen. So uh, his plan is for all people to give him praise. Amen. His plan for the earth, the new earth that's going to yield her increase. Amen. And, and and God is in this song was in a form of a song and it was given to the chief musician. So we wonder how was it sung? Uh, a doxology, a doxology. We used to sing, yeah, praise God from whom all blessings flow, praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And so, doxology, just praise a psalm of praise. Amen. So we thank God uh, for this 67 Psalm. If any question or comments on this song, feel free to reach out on it. You want to share your thoughts on Psalm 67, feel free. Yeah, Pastor, um, for this last um, comment that you made uh, about all the nations, uh, and for those who don't recognize who God is or don't acknowledge who he is, I had a meeting with my manager yesterday. She's a new manager now. And uh, it was the first time we met, and not so much what the comment that we were talking about, but what stood out. Um, she made some things about me, you know, I thank you for what you do, blah, 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 blah. And I saw, well, we, I said, I guess it's a Jesus in me. And she said, oh, well, you know, I thank my lucky stars. <laughs> That's what she said. So, but I, I know the respect that we have for each other, you know, and but I'm glad I'm able to say that. And it was, in, you know, serious in a way. No, that's a Jesus in me. I you know, do what I have to do. But just to make that point that you just said about, you know, people not acknowledging who God is. Maybe she didn't want to say it. I don't know. But she didn't say it. She said, I thank my lucky stars. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, when you come into the knowledge of, of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, God, the Father, the, our creator, uh, you, you'll have a different change of mind different attitude, a different thought, even your words, your conduct, your conversation, your character, all changes. If it, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. So this is the evident. So that, you know, we encounter people. We ain't got to go to work. You got them in our families, <laughs> you know, but uh, we have to continue to uh, preach that we can reach each and everybody, you know, uh, preach, reach, and each, each, amen, preach, reach, each and everyone, the aches of mankind. And so, uh, and we have to continue because God have a plan and he's not done yet until he comes back and his desire. Oh, oh yeah. I got another scripture for you. We're going to close out. Uh, second Peter three and nine. Here's the other scripture. Second Peter three and nine. Read that. Second Peter three and nine, Sister Cunningham. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering towards us. Pause, right? Pause. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, 
as some men count, but is long suffering to us. What don't you? Aren't you glad God is patient and kind and long suffering toward us? Word us mankind. Amen. That's what I'm trying to say. Keep on reading. And I was trying to find the scripture earlier. Uh, <laughs> it's funny. So it's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. All right, so that's God's ideal plan for mankind, that none should be lost, but that all would come to repentance. I think that concludes God's plan that will cause all nations become uh, praisers of our, our God, amen? So he's patient, he's kind, he has got none to be lost, but when God moves, he's gonna move. So he, that's why I'm trying to say, he doesn't want to be said that no one knows or no one had the opportunity. Uh, for salvation. God bless you. Any other questions or comments tonight? Good evening, Pastor. Bless you, Sister um, Pence. I, I would just like to share on Saturday, I was on the subway on my way home and a young lady came on to the train and God can use anyone. She wasn't what I would exactly say a homeless person, but you could see that God had been working with her. And she was given a testimony that caught my attention. And I was fixated on her words because she was confessing her love for God, yes. what he had done for her, how he changed her life in that things that she used to have to do, she wasn't doing anymore. And we both got on the elevator and she was digging in her pockets for money that she had solicited. And it, it struck me because she said things that she used to have to do, she doesn't have to do anymore. And God was blessing her that she had all of this money that she could go and eat. And I just found that to be so profound that God can use any one of us. And we judge not people because we don't know where they are in their life or yes. why. And yes. it was just something that really inspired me because she was confessing to everyone on that subway and she didn't care who was looking at her Yes. She didn't care that some people responded or didn't respond, but she caught my attention. And I thank God for giving me that vision on that day. Yeah, beautiful. And let, let me share how awesome God is. He can put together a song. Now, we have different people, different nations, different languages, different uh, background, ethnicity, ethnicity. But God is so awesome. He can, he can come up with a song, one song that everybody can identify with. I remember I went to a uh, funeral service, uh, uh, Haitian origin, French. I think they're French speaking and a French speaking funeral service. And I didn't really understand the dialect, amen. But one thing, uh, as a believer, they were believers, but I didn't understand the dialect. But when the musician began to, and the choir began to sing Amazing Grace, that song, do you know how, how powerful and how awesome that song, Amazing Grace is? I don't care where you are in the world. You might not, they might sing it in another dialogue, but Amazing Grace, oh, oh Lord. I said, I'm in the right place. <laughs> Amen, I'm in the right place. God bless you. I remember I was on the cruise ship, I'm done. And I was sitting in, it was midnight. My wife and I was at midnight and it was a lot of people at the midnight buffet. And we were sitting there at the counter and there was a production group that was on the cruise ship and they was writing this this must be some a group of uh, directors or or i don't know who they were they were caucasian people and what happened was they were sitting in earshot and they had the words of the song they had amazing grace how sweet the sound that saved the wretch like me i once was lost but now i'm fine was blind but now i see uh uh how precious uh amazing uh, towards grace that taught my heart to fear and grace my fear relieved that's where they got stuck 
Amen. And they and the guy was saying, don't nobody know the rest of the song? <laughs> the words of the song? Twas grace that taught my heart to fear and grace my fear relieved. And they actually were sitting there uh, and then I just said, how precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed? And they, you should have seen these people just jump up. Yeah, because I knew the words of the song, you know. And they came over to me and said, thank you, thank you. Amen. But it's universal. God's love is universal. God's song, his praise ought to be universal. Yeah, that was a good moment. You know, like I had words of gold. You know, they were stuck. They was trying to put the word to the amazing grace to the, you know, <laughs> the words to the song. And I just had to intrude. And I tell you, so we thank God for his universal spirit, his universal love, universal praise. God bless you tonight uh, as we want to close out. And I don't know if Minister Graham is on the line tonight. I know that she said she was going away. If Minister Graham is on the line, feel free. Minister Graham, close it out with a word of prayer. All right, she must. I know she said she was going away for two weeks, so let's keep her in prayer. She give her traveling mercy. Amen. And one of my deacons on the line tonight, Deacon Cooper or Deacon Walters, come and close us out with a word of prayer. Okay, Pastor. Let us pray. Father God, it's in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that we come before you again on this evening just to give you praise, give you honor, and to give you glory. And to say thank you, Lord God, for this opportunity to be able to study your holy and divine word, which is the bread of life for us who know you, who love you, and the one who knows that you are God and God all by yourself, the one that has our told being in your palm of your holy and divine hand. And we just come praising and thanking you, Lord, that we have had an opportunity to hear your word, to be able to study it, Lord. And we thank you for the man that stood in John's shoes this after this evening, Lord, our pastor, the Reverend Frank Hawkins, to deliver your word from on high. Yeah. But Father God, we now have we have now heard the word. We have now read the word. We have now studied the word. But we are praying right now, Lord, that you would touch it with the Holy Spirit that will guide us and allow us to be doers of your word and not just be readers and hearers of your word. We're asking that you right now, once again, bless each and every person that's on the line this evening. And Lord God, keep us as only you, got, only you can. We thank you for this another opportunity, Father God. And we pray that uh, when we come together again on next week to be able to study your word, that we will also remember the word that we'll study on this evening. And again, we ask that you will bless us and allow us to apply those words. But not only that, Lord, be able to share it with others. Yes. Especially those who yet to know you for the pardon of their sin, Lord God. Let them know about this wonderful, powerful God that we serve. A God that's so the anger but swift with mercy. A God that is our protector. A God that is our healer. A God that is anything that we need him to be. And, oh, Father God, we will always remember to give your name, the praise, the glory, and the honor. That is all truly due you, for you are worthy to be praised. Bless us and we shall be blessed. Keep us and we shall be kept. And it's in the precious name of our Lord and Savior that we say this prayer and ask these blessings. Amen. Amen. Bless the prayer. As we look to be dismissed, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. God bless you tonight. Amen. 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 God bless you. God bless you. Pastor. Bless, bless you. Good night and pastor. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Yeah. God bless you, Pastor. Good night. Good night. Good night. God bless everyone. Good night. Have a good night. 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 Thank God. Wow, that looks out. Really? Really excellent. Hi, Bruce. Hey, Dan, what you think? Oh, hey there, Natalie. God bless everyone tonight who's on the line. Pastor, God bless you. God bless you.